Welcome back to Hangar 51. Okay, guys, just got back from the flying field and uh, super impressed. Man, these fly great. Uh, I got to tell you, they're just beautiful. They fly in the air. Um, I like planes that want to fly, and these planes want to fly. Now, what I mean by that is once you've trimmed the plane out, it's for straight and level flight, it'll stay straight and level flight. It doesn't try to roll itself into the ground, and you're constantly correcting. These planes want to fly. You just turn them loose. Literally, if you set the transmitter on the ground, they would just fly away. Now, I've got some planes that you got to stick them all the time. If you're not sticking it, it's just going to roll, and it'll just keep rolling until it rolls into the ground. And it's just the characteristic of the plane. It's usually a flatter wing that does that. Uh, a couple of planes I have have no dihedral in them, and, and uh, they just tend to want to roll uh, one way or the other. It's, you know, you're constantly correcting to keep them flying. Not these. Once you trim them out, they just want to fly. They're just they're fantastic. They fly beautiful. Um, had a lot of wind today. Uh, it was probably uh, we were probably fighting 18 mile an hour winds gusts into 2025. It was it was a windy day, but they handle it fine. They handle it fine. Now, like I said, I put a, a, a AS3X a stabilizer receiver in this one and my Free Sky receiver in this one with the telemetry, and I noticed zero difference in the way they fly. They both cut through the air. They just fly. Uh, the AS3X wasn't helping at all. As a matter of fact, the only downside to the AS3X is the elevator or the uh, the rudder has a lot of authority, um, and it was constantly recorrecting for, you know, not necessary corrections. So I was getting a little tail waggle uh, because the AS3X kept, you know, fighting what it thinks is a yaw. You know, and maybe the plane was yawing a little bit from the wind, but it, you know, it, it, it got that waggle a little bit. Um, and I, I know it was the AS3X doing that. But other than that, it, it, it was unnoticeable that it was in there. Didn't need it. The planes fly fantastic, both of them. They just fly beautiful. Uh, they look good in the air. They look scale in the air. I'm a scale flyer. I wasn't flying wide open the whole time. You know, I was cruising, you know, between 30 and 40 mile an hour. Top speed on both of them is probably 65 to 70, I'd say, wide open. Uh, they both go vertical, about 100 feet. They, you know, they start to bleed off pretty fast on a vertical. So you can get a good 100 foot, no problem doing a loop. It, it'll loop just fine. But, you know, you can't just go vertical to the stars. They don't, they don't have that kind of power. Now they have a scale four blade prop on them. If you took the prop off and put a two, two blade on it, it'd probably go vertical. I don't see any reason why not. Plenty of power. These things are super light. So they just leap off the ground. I mean, the takeoff roll on both of them is, you know, 10 or 15 feet probably. If you gun it. I don't, you know, I just a half throttle and I was off in 15, 20 feet. I mean, they just take off nice and gentle. They do not try to torque roll, which is a big plus. I really like that. I, I have the, uh, the uh, 1200 Corsair from horizon with the green stripes on it and uh, it torque rolls terrible. If you over throttle that on takeoff it wants to just screw itself into the ground. It, I've had a lot of bad takeoffs with that plane. Um, you know it gets in the air too quick because it's also very light and uh, it doesn't have flying speed yet so the torque of the motor starts to try to roll it over and you know it's a fight sometimes. You know, it, it's a touchy airplane to get in the air but not these. These these take off beautiful. You know, both of them. They just take right off. You know, suck up the gear, clean them up. Landing was beautiful on both of them. They're floaters. They just come in and they're floating. Um, just you know, bring you know, fly them to the to the runway. You know, to your right over the runway, and then uh, you know, start pulling the throttle back and just let it settle in. You know, and and if when you're when you're under six inches, you can cut the throttle at that point and just let it soak right in. They, I, I, both of them I landed half flaps uh, with all the wind I have. I really didn't need any flaps, but I like to put the flaps down. Um, uh, for me anyway, it seems like the plane's a little more stable with the flaps, even just at half. It, it seems to slow the the wind rocking it a little. So, so I landed them both. I've got three flights on each of them. Um, just beautiful. I mean, just 
they just fly amazing. Uh, I'm very, very happy with these things. They fly great. They look great in the air. Everybody at the flying field loved them. I, I, they, they especially the paint finish. They couldn't stop talking about the paint, especially on the 51. This silver, you just cannot see that it's foam. You know, they were, you know, they were just amazed. They kept saying, "It doesn't even look like foam. You can't see the foam." I said, "Yeah, I know. You know." So I, I know who made these airplanes. I know that I'm not going to say, but I know who the manufacturer is because there's only one manufacturer that makes foam to this quality. So um, I can just tell you that it's one of the best. Yeah, you know, th this this particular company is one of the best manufacturers there is, and th this shows it. I mean, if you buy these planes, you'll see what I mean. They're just uh, amazing, They're beautiful airplanes. So yeah, that's my flight review, guys. They flew fantastic. Um, no bad tendencies. Uh, I didn't try to stall either one of them. Uh, I did bring them both down to a very slow, very slow, uh, and they didn't do anything. They didn't try to, you know, tip stall. They didn't try to stall at all, really, and they were, you know, I mean, practically not flying, and they, they still didn't stall. So uh, no bad tendencies at all. No torque rolling, no stalling, uh, you know, just flying, and, and, and you know, they both roll really good. They have good roll rates, both of them. The Bearcat actually rolls a little straighter uh, than the than the Mustang. I don't know if maybe one of my maybe I had a little rudder in it and the trim or something, but you know the Bearcat does absolutely spiral stoles, uh, rolls, and the Mustang. I think it was just one way, not the other. It had a slight tail waggy. Roll, which most of my Mustangs do. Uh, they don't, none of them screw, you know. The Bearcat seemed a little faster. You know, it could have been the batteries I was using. I didn't use the same batteries in both of them, and maybe the battery was a little stronger in the Bearcat. Now I was flying this with a 2200, because um, I don't have, um, well, because nothing else will fit in it, and I didn't want to start hacking it up yet. It's a brand new airplane. I don't want to start hacking it up. You know, the battery bay, that's my only complaint. I, I have, of both these airplanes, I only have one complaint. It's a minor one, but I don't like that kind of battery bay. To me, I want to be able to strap my battery in so I can put whatever size battery I want and put it where I want. You know, there's no way to put a strap on this battery. It's a, it's a slide in the foam and hope it's tight enough. You know, if you've got thinner, smaller 2200s or something smaller than a 2200, a 2000, 1800, there's no way to keep the battery in there. You, may, you can wrap foam around it and shove it in there, which is what you're going to have to do. There's no way to put a strap on it. You, you can't get to it to put a strap on it. You can only slide it in that little cubby hole, which is designed for a standard 2200. A 2200 that hasn't puffed will slide right in it. If it's puffed, you're not going to get it in there. So that's why I don't like these kind of battery holes. Uh, they're, they're just, you know, I think uh, if they wanted to improve this airplane, yeah, I don't mind this. This is fine. You know, this should come off because it gives you access to the to the servos and where you want to put your receiver and everything, and that's fine. I don't have any problem with this. Um, actually, you can't get to the servos in here. I guess the servos. I think, if I remember right, the elevator servo is right there. I believe the rudder servo you get access through the tail wheel because the tail wheel has four screws. So I think if you drop the tail wheel down, you'll have access to the rudder servo. The servos are not in here. They are in this one. The serve the two with the, the elevator and rudder servos are side by side in inside here. They're not in the back, but the, the Mustang has the rudder servo in the back. Um, or I'm sorry, the elevator servo. Is right here on the side, and I believe the rudder servo is by the tail wheel. But you have access to where you want to put your receiver. You can get to the speed control. So my suggestion would be to still have this come off like it does, but have it come all the way up to here. There's a panel line that you could put across here that would look exactly right, right along the line with the Shangri-La um, decal, the checkerboard. So you'd split it right there and have all of this with this come off as one piece. Similar to this. See, this one goes all the way up to a panel line, you know, up by the front, and you have access to everything, and you can put the battery in there and strap it down. You can't do that in this. Um, so you, you're very limited on what batteries you can put in this plane. You can put any battery you want in that one. And I'm sure the T28 is just like this. 
So that's my only complaint about both airplanes. I have no complaints on the, the Bearcat. Fantastic. Everything about this I love except the battery bag, the battery compartment. I'm not a fan of this shoving the battery up forward. FMS was doing it for years. I don't like it um, on their on their um, their 1450 planes. Now they've got a tray that slides in and out, which is a big help. I mean, I do like that. Um, but the 1700s are still you get you just have to shove the battery up front in a cubby hole similar to this on both the uh, P47 and the Mustang and uh, there's just no, there's no way to strap it in it's, 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 I, I don't like that design I, I'm not a fan of that so that's my only complaint I don't like the battery compartment you know I have several swelled up 22200s that won't fit in that battery bay um, and I know you guys are going to say well you should be flying those anyway well you know listen the swelling is not that big of an issue it's the non-balancing if the battery pack charges evenly Okay, all three cells are evenly charged, and it discharges evenly, then the pack is usable. There's nothing wrong with using a swollen battery, as long as the cells match, and they're, they're charging and discharging evenly. And I have several packs like that, and I've been flying them for years like that. Um, so that's not the big issue. The big issue with the, you know, with the, the swelling is not the big issue. You know, once the battery stops charging evenly, or starts just, like you've got one cell that that quits quickly and the other two are still hanging on, you don't want to use that anymore. That's the pack you get rid of that one. But just because it's swolled doesn't mean it's no good anymore. Uh, you know, you can, st like I said, as long as it charges and discharges evenly, you're fine. Um, you know, of course you want to keep an eye on it. You know, I have a crashed battery pack that's all mushed in the front. But I checked every cell. All the cells are good. I've charged it and discharged it several times. On the uh, on the bench just to test it, it charges and discharges fine. So I'm continuing to fly that battery. I've been flying it for a year now. You know, mushed pretty hard from a crash. So um, you know, don't disregard a battery just because of that. It's, there's you know, as long as it's still performing correctly, it's usable. You know, um, I wouldn't just I mean, you all make your own decisions. I mean, I'm just telling you my experiences. You know, and, I, and I've had very good luck with swollen batteries that still charge and discharge evenly. So I, I'm going to continue to use them. I just can't use them in this because they're not going to fit. You know, once they've swelled that much, they don't fit in there. You know, that's that's the limitation of a of a battery hole like that. So my only complaint: it's a tiny one. Wouldn't stop me from buying this airplane. I absolutely love it. It's beautiful. I love this Shangri-La. Uh, you know graphic and uh, you know that's why I bought it I wanted a Shangri-La graphic again I had one I lost it uh, sold it and uh, so I've got another one it's beautiful I love it I love the Bearcat but won the Bearcat for years was gonna buy uh, flight lines but not now um, you know they took that right off the table and I'm and I'm glad they didn't now because I, I like this one much better I was out at the field today with it and there's a guy there with a flight line one and I took it over and I set it right down next to him and then he says wow who makes that arrows RC with an S and he's like wow so he says what size is it because it looked almost the same I mean I, I literally held it over the top of his and these wings were only maybe an inch on each side shorter you know it's about a two inch it was very close in size. The, the, there's such a 1200, and this is 1100. I don't know if this is 1150, 1160, and theirs is only 1190, and they're calling it 1200. I don't know, but they they seemed a lot closer than a full 1100 to 1200. I think that's four inches, and it, there wasn't a four inch difference. So I think probably both companies are fudging the numbers. I bet this is a little over 1100, and I bet theirs is a little under 1200. So they were very close in size. Um, the detail on this one was much better. He even said, wow, look at the panel lines. Look at the rivets. You know, he says, you know, that's, that's beautiful. So, um, anyway, um, so that's my review. I don't have any flight footage. Sorry. I, uh, I couldn't get anybody to take the camera and, and film it for me. So I don't have any flight footage yet. I didn't want to stick my uh, Mobius on the top of the canopies until I had flown them. And comfortable, and the, it was so windy. I, I didn't want to film it today anyway from the plane, because when you do a film from the plane in wind, and it's 
doing this, it just looks exaggerated on video versus, you know, from the ground it doesn't look so bad, but, you know, when it's getting tossed around it looks really bad from the, from the plane. So I wouldn't have shot that video anyway, but I'll get some video. But uh, if you want to see him fly, Ryan already did a flight on uh, the Bearcat anyway, for sure. I saw that, and, uh, and it, it's accurate. That's how it flies. It really flies, just like you're going to see it on, on Ryan's. So jump over to Ryan's. Uh, I'm sure if you Googled this, his came up too. So that's how it flies, and just like he says. I mean, it, you know, it flies beautiful. Um, you know, just they're both fantastic. Uh, they want to fly. They definitely want to, want to stay in the air. They're not a fight to keep them in the air. you got to trim them out. Very little trimming. Just like Ryan said, you know, I had to put a little down elevator in both of them. Um, I don't think I put a, more than a click either way on the ailerons to level it. I mean, it, 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 it really, right out of the box, the way it was set up, they flew, you know, almost untouched. They, they needed so little trimming. They both needed a little down, I think they both needed a little down trim. I know the Bearcat for sure did. I can't remember if the, yeah, I think the Mustang did too. Yeah, they both needed just a tad bit of down trim. Um, only last tip, guys, um, on tail dragger airplanes like this, if you're, if you're having trouble with it nosing over a lot, uh, there's two things. First, make sure your wheels are rolling freely. You know, there's nothing hanging on them. You know, you can't. You're gonna, I, I flew off grass, guys. I'm, I fly off a of grass running. You know, Ryan's flying off of that. It's not pavement. It's that rubber sheet stuff. I forget what they call it. Um, I was flying off grass today, and it's a it's a uh, it's a well cut grass field, um, but it's not it's not good grass. You know, it, it has a lot of um, sandy patches. You know, like there's a clump of grass, and then there's some sand, and another clump of grass. And these are pretty small wheels, so they were handling it pretty well. Uh, but every once in a while, you know, when I rolled over a tuff of grass and hit the sand, and then when it rolled to the next tuff of grass, it stopped, and it would nose over. So, um, which is to be expected. You know, it, it, you can't expect something this small um, to, to to handle that that well. So, you know, it was a. I had a fifty percent. Success. I, I three times. I, I've got six flights, three each. Um, I had to go out, walk out and pick it up three times because I couldn't taxi back. And uh, three times I got them to taxi back. You know, I hit. I got them in the area where there was um, good grass, and I was able to on the good grass it taxied fine, beautifully. But my tip is, is if your wheels are free and rolling, then you have the battery a little too far forward. Um, I know they give you CG numbers. Listen, that's a guide. That's a that's a starting point. It's not etched in stone. You know, if you're nosing over, you probably have the battery a little too far forward. Try sliding the battery back a little bit, you know, until it stops trying to nose over. You know, unless you're fighting. You know, like I said, if, if I hit a tuff of grass, it's going to try to nose over because it stops the wheel. But if you're rolling on grass or pavement, and you're still fighting, a, you know, it keeps getting light in the tail. The battery's too far forward. Back the CG up a little bit, you know, and just do it a little at a time. You know, back it up, fly it, see if it's still flying good. Back it up again, you know. You'll know when you get it too far. You know, when it gets real, you know, elevator sensitive, you've gone too far. You know, now you're starting to get into the tail, tail heavy range. So don't don't get it to there. Um, but uh, you know, if it's if it's getting light in the tail, just trying to taxi it, then you probably have the battery too far forward. So back it up. I didn't shove the battery all the way to the front on this. You know, I kept it, you know, probably about three quarters of the way in. You know, I didn't slide it all the way up and tuck it against as far in as I could go. Didn't need that. That that would have put the battery way too far forward. It didn't need that. You know, I slid it in. It was snug. It was probably three quarters of the way in. There was still a little bit of battery hanging out. Um, that was far enough. You know your, you know your your uh, uh, placement of your receiver, the size receiver you're using, you know how heavy is the receiver, all going to affect it. So I'm just giving you a guide that I did not shove the battery all the way to the nose. It wasn't necessary. I did shove the battery all the way to the nose on this, and um, it was probably too far. I was flying to 3,000 in this three cell, and I. 
the 2200 is the only thing I could get in this. So, um, six to nine minutes flight time on both planes. Didn't matter if it was a 2200 or the 3000. Had no bearing on it. It was just how aggressive I was flying it. Um, my 3000 packs are old and tired, but they still handled you know, the six to nine minutes, no problem. And my 2200s and the Mustang that were my good 2200s, no problem. Nine minutes on that, you know, cruising, you know, mostly cruising. I, I did some high-speed passes, full throttle, and I did a couple of full throttle verticals, but I didn't fly the whole flight full throttle. You know, like I said, I'm a cruiser, you know, I like scale speed. So, you know, I'm coming across the field, you know, eye level or below at, you know, 40 miles an hour, about half throttle, maybe 40% throttle. And, uh, you know, and it's doing 35, 40, and it comes across beautifully. And then I, I might throttle up as I climb out sometimes. Sometimes I don't need to. I've got enough speed to just climb out, do a nice turn, and come back. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll throttle up a little bit to do some rolls. But uh, in general, you know, I don't fly full throttle the whole time. So six to nine minutes was easily done on both planes. Uh, had had beautiful flights. So... So there you have it, guys. Uh, I can't tell you enough uh, how happy I am with these two airplanes. They're just fantastic. Uh, at 159 bucks right now, listen, go there. The promo code is all caps arrows with an S. That's your promo code. You get $20 off on each plane singularly. If you buy two at the same time, you get $30 off both planes. That's a screaming deal. I highly recommend you if you're gonna if you're thinking about these planes, don't think any longer. Go get them, because that deal ends the 25th uh, of February this this month, February the 25th. So don't wait. Uh, and and I think I don't think they're gonna give you a rain check either. If they run out of these, I think it's over. So um, uh, I'm not positive of that, but I have a feeling that they're not going to. Uh, I don't think they were expecting the, res the, the response they're getting. From what I hear, they're selling a lot of airplanes. Um, so I wouldn't wait too long. Jump on it. $189 normally. $20 off if you buy one. $30 off each plane if you buy two uh, till the 25th of February. Go get yours now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. And we'll see you at the flying field. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.